the car, she didn't think about last long. She got a kiss to me. How y'all doing? This is your boy AJ the Black World Traveler. And today I'm doing a video on what made me have the inspiration to travel. And so my inspiration to traveling was that living in the United States for 18 years of my life, the first for the first 18 years of my life, as a kid, it was always black and white. Black and white. It was always, you know, black people, white people. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you watch movies and everything. It was always the black man running from the white man, afraid of him, afraid of the lynch party. Driver, put your hands on the steering wheel. I always never understood why black people hated black people so much. You think you toss. Self-hate, it gotta stop. And it's a mindset. I'm scared now. I like that. That's why I took this job. I hate little motherfuckers like you. My whole mentality was like, I gotta leave. I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing black people lose. Like, you know, you go to a predominant black neighborhood, always a ghetto, it's always everybody robbing each other. You hear about people getting jacked, like, and it's still going on to this day. Hey, come on, man, we supposed to be brothers. We see history of the white men, you know, lynching us and doing all these things. Cause these are old stories, you know after we were born, because these things are happening before we were born. It was always a white family that wasn't with that. And then they get called like nigger lovers and all that, and they'll probably lose their lives because they didn't believe in the races, you know. Even, you know, didn't agree with the races. The funniest thing is that all the years of being in America, I never had a white man call me an N-word, never. It was always the blacks calling you an N-word. Which I never understood the concept of that. Look, niggas, you ain't shit. You wanna, you wanna be a man, but every time you deal with a black man, you gotta call him a nigga. And to me, that was always disturbing because you always tell a story about how the white man is the devil and all this stuff and how he's so manipulative, but then when you deal with your own people, they refer to you as niggas. I never understood that concept. So that's another reason why I wanted to travel. Cause I got tired of seeing the bullshit. I got tired of seeing it. And even though I wasn't raised in the hood, man, black people still was just always hateful, man. Always hated against each other. Like, when you see black people was always, always a beef, it was always not getting along, you know. I just got tired of that shit, so I left. You know, even in the 80s, man, when you saw the, you know, the, the crack epidemic and you know, people becoming crack dealers and, you know, kids, you didn't know there were people, you know, in undercovers, you know, we didn't know there were people trafficking the drugs either. we were kids. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. My parents took us out of the city, so we didn't really witness the crack error like most people did. My boy kept telling me, my boy Skip kept saying, man, you know, and you go to the Navy, man, you can travel around the world, man. The Navy, you ain't gotta kill nobody, you ain't gotta get a gun. <laughs> Cause I really, I was gonna go to the Marine Corps and I really didn't wanna do that. I didn't wanna kill nobody or have to be taught to kill. So, um, I ended up joining the Navy. In the boot camp, there's a time when they, you know, you get your orders right before you, right before you graduate. And so that day we get our orders, you know, they show you what school you're going to, uh, what day when you, you know what day you're gonna be there and what day you're riding your school they give you all the instructions where well, it was me and this Filipino dude named Baltazar and they said Baltazar and Jones you don't have to be here because you're getting stationed in Japan and I was like Japan I ain't going to Japan I don't want to go to Japan the dude I know he said man I'll go if you don't want to go I'll go and I was like, what? He said, man, I'd love to go to Japan. You don't want to go, man. Give me your orders. I'll go. And he said, no, nah, you know, those are his orders. So, I get stationed in Japan. They had been on the airplane. They had been with my sisters. So, I, you know, the day I had to leave, man, I, I hugged my, hug my sister, older sister. 
she went to work, she was crying. I started crying. I ain't never knew I had emotions like that. And then my younger sister, you know, was there with, with us. So later that day, I went to the airport. My parents drove to LAX. Uh, me, my dad, my younger sister, and my mom, and we drove to LAX. And when I got to LAX, and they called my flight number, and my mom started crying, and they gave me a hug, and I got on a plane to go to Japan. I ain't never been on a plane, so I didn't know what to expect. I was nervous. I was sad, because I was like, man, I'm leaving everything behind, friends and family and my first uh, port visit was after my sixth day in the ship. We went to Kagoshima, Japan. <clears throat> Five days Liberty. Liberty is what they call when you can, you know, basically get off the ship and you don't work. Basically, you get, it's like giving you vacation time. So Liberty is like Liberty is like a vacation. So we had a Friday Liberty in Kagoshima, Japan, and. When I first went out, I was like walking to people, hey, where you from? You know, not not understanding that I got to learn Japanese. and I just, But I was like interested in meeting people. So I was instantly like that person saying, hey, how you doing? And someone's looking at me and smile. I wave to them and they wave back. Then from that point on, I knew I was a traveler. And we went from there to the Philippines. Now, I mind you, I ain't never been out of the country. So I go to the Philippines and it's crazy. It's crazy. And I remember this dude named Koontz. His last name was Koontz. He was in boot camp with me. And I remember seeing Koontz. He's like, hey, man. What's up? What's up, Jones? And he's telling me, like, yeah, man, this girl likes you, whatever. I'm like, he hanging out. He's, he lives, he's stationed in the Philippines on the base. So I'm hanging out with this girl. I didn't know the girl was a prostitute. I had no idea, man. I was, I was fresh. I'm new to girls. I'm man. I'm so. I'm. So, I was afraid of having children. I was afraid of getting a girl pregnant. So I was real, really not heavily sexually active because I didn't want to have no kids. I didn't want to get a girl pregnant. I kind of wanted to live my life without children at the moment. And I remember this girl said, "Come to my go hang out with me." I went with her. Went to her place. She had sex with me, and then she was like, "Fifteen dollars." Yeah, it's fifteen dollars. I'm like, fifteen dollars for what?" She's like, "We love you long time." For this, I'm like, "Oh, you working?" She's like, "Yeah, that's what I do." She's a pretty woman. I said, well, "And I'm, I'm naive because I'm like, well, why are you doing this?" Like, "Well, I gotta make money." I said, "But you're a beautiful woman. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? It don't make any sense to me." She's like, "Oh, well, that's what we gotta do." That's the first time I had that encounter, man, and I, I was shocked. I didn't know, you know. And then from that point on, um, I spent the rest of the couple of days there. And then we ended up going to um, we ended up going to Bahrain. We go to Saudi Arabia, dropping off the soldiers and stuff in Saudi Arabia. Then we anchored out in Bahrain. When I anchored out, we yeah we anchored out in Bahrain, and we were there in Bahrain for like probably a good two or three weeks, almost a month, and then. We got excused from 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 Dubai from uh, from Bahrain, and we ended up going to Thailand for five days, and that was crazy because I was getting introduced to women. Like I'm young man, so I'm a young dude. I never you know had women tell me how pretty I was, and they were telling me I was pretty. I was like pretty. He's like, oh, you're pretty chocolate and. I was like 18, I never heard that I was beautiful. I never heard anyone say, oh, you're gorgeous, you're handsome. I never heard that. So I'm in Thailand, these pretty people are telling me, oh, you're so pretty. Hey, you know, if you've been around Thailand, you go to Thailand, Thai people got pretty brown skin. They're pretty, they got beautiful brown skin. I mean, I'm talking about everybody's complexion is brown and really clear skin. And I was just shocked because I'd never heard that before. So. It was like, hey, chocolate man. Hey, where I went, chocolate man, chocolate man, hey. And I was be like laughing, like, damn, this is crazy. But they was all saying, you're so beautiful. And then I'm, I remember when I met these two Australian chicks. And then I got there, and the girl was like, oh, my God, you are gorgeous. And she was like, I was like, really? She's like, you know how gorgeous you are? I'm like, uh, no. She was like, yeah, you are, man, you are gorgeous, black man. 
and she's telling me this, and I'm sitting there blown away because this woman is, when I say this woman was gorgeous, but she was a beautiful woman. And she was just like, man, you are amazingly beautiful. She just was telling me how beautiful I was, and I wish I was staying here longer. I would love to hang out with you because you are, and you seem, you're so nice. You got a beautiful smile. Is your friend, you see, you got the whitest teeth. Oh my God, you such a prettiest smile. And bro, I was sitting there just, just, I was sitting there like, dang, I never heard this at home. So I'm here like, dang, it's crazy that I'm black in America and I've never heard this. And you know, me being black in America was always, you know, always a dark skinned dude that the girls thought was, all the black girls thought it was ugly. But even when I was a kid, a lot of the most girls that liked me were the non-black girls. Some like them black girls like me, but a lot of the, you know, white girls and the Latin girls would be like, oh my God, you're so gorgeous. It just was amazing how different you get treated when you leave here. And I was just blown away that I was getting so much attention for being me. Being taught how beautiful I was and how handsome I was and how I can't believe you don't realize how handsome you are. I just didn't know that. And so my confidence grew. You know, because I'm like, shit, I ain't never know this shit. And then I lived in Japan, and same thing, I would meet girls, and they'd be like, oh my God, you're so nice, and you're such a handsome guy. And it was always amazing to me. And I meet these gorgeous women, they would just tell me how, uh, how, you know, handsome I was. And it's sad that you have to live in a place where, you know, in your own country where you're born and raised, and, and you don't hear that. You don't hear that, you know, oh yeah, you're a handsome man or you're attractive. Like, that makes a lot a difference when someone gives you a compliment, when someone's praising you for what God has given you naturally. And the saddest thing about it, when you don't even know that you are that person. I mean, I, you know, I stayed in shape. I was, you know, work out and stuff, keep myself clean. You know, I like to look good, but just not having that attention, not having those comments man makes a big difference man when no one's giving you praise and then they meet me and be like man you so you're so different from the most you know American guys because they would tell me a lot of American guys they're just you know <clears throat> you're just different you're nice you're respectful well that's what I was always told to do whenever you go in the world man you know have respect you know wherever you go in the world carry yourself as a, you know, decent human being. Don't go nowhere, you know, causing problems. My dad always told me if it's, and avoid problems. Whatever you do, you avoid problems. Don't go nowhere. You don't ever want to go nowhere being a problem. Living in California, man, is like, a black man was always stereotyped as being somebody you can't trust. I was a cab driver. One time this guy lost something in the car, and he's like, he got a stole something from him. And I said, I never stole nothing in my, in my life. He said, yeah, right, because I was black. So and the guy felt bad. He tried to call me, and I wouldn't answer his call no more. He, he, found out what he, was, he found what he was looking for. He thought I stole it from him when I was a cab driver. And I told him I never stole nothing in my life because I was taught that. You don't steal, man. You, like my mother always says, you steal. You can't trust anybody that steals. Anytime you're a thief, you'll never be trusted. And so my, I used to steal, you know, cookies out the cookie jar. But I never stole, so I never stole anything out of the store. I never had the desire to steal. And you know, people think because kids are from the hood, because you got kids that from the hood, you think, oh yeah, the cat from the hood, he gonna steal. Man, I know a lot of dudes from the hood that wouldn't steal nothing because they just didn't believe in stealing. Like there's people to this day that are from the ghetto that just won't steal. There's cats today that. They just won't steal. There's some people that are just like that. They're just not going to be a thief. No matter what the circumstances are, they're just not going to be a thief. Everybody's not a thief in the hood. Everybody's not, you know, scandalous and, and jackers and robbers in the hood. There's not. A lot of people just don't do that. They don't want to go to jail. I think when you're black and you're living in the ghetto, you're going to always be stereotyped. But if you're black in general, people are gonna stereotype you by how you carry yourself. Uh, if you like the content, please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. 
Also, add a like and share. And um, I'll be back at you. It's AJ, the Black World Traveler. I'm out. Nothing leave my account from plenty of fish and tender, baby.